Okay, hi Randy, how are you doing? Good, how about you Christopher? I'm doing well, doing well. So uh, for this conversation, I, I just wanted to learn more about you, your journey to pro bono, and, and a little bit more about you know, what pro bono consulting means and does. So I'd like to start with your background. You know, what got you interested in business and, and consulting? Definitely. Um, well, I've always been very entrepreneurial. Um, something about business has always excited me. Um, and I really started to develop that interest throughout college. Um, after graduating, I, you know, I worked in finance at TJX. Uh, while I really enjoyed finance, I was kind of not uh, my passion because it was black that entrepreneurial side. And so I actually ended up leaving my job at TJX and I tried to pursue my own entrepreneurial ventures. Um, that ultimately led me to working with a small business, a food truck called the dining car. Um, and I was helping them with their business, um, as a kind of consultant doing things like their finance work, their marketing, et cetera. And then I started to realize I really enjoyed that. And it was really exciting and fun. Um, kind of solving problems and helping businesses grow. So I decided to expand that and to uh, start working with additional clients. Um, and so far, it's been a great experience. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds good. Uh, so a little more on pro bono specifically. Uh, can you talk about what gave you the idea to start pro bono? And, and can you describe that moment where you came up with the idea? Definitely. I've never, I think I've only told this story to one person, um, which was so hum during one of our, you know, pro bono happy hours. Uh, I was out on a walk. Um, it was like midnight in Boston. I'm, I'm out on a walk. And, you know, I do my best thinking when I'm walking and at nighttime. So really got the creative juices flowing. I'm walking in the street and I'm trying to figure out like, what do I want to do with my life? And I, you know, had really like, I've been doing some consulting. I wanted to grow that. I didn't know really how to grow that. Um, and so I was kind of thinking about life during the pandemic, and I noticed that you know the, some of the clients I was working with at the time um, were really struggling to adapt to the changes brought by uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I also noticed there's a lot of people on LinkedIn who had uh, gotten laid off. I think like the day before I thought of pro bono, I heard that one of my friends was like potentially getting laid off. Um, and so it seemed like there's a lot of people who are losing their jobs or couldn't find an internship. And then also a lot of small businesses who just need help, um, but couldn't necessarily afford the uh, free, like, professional services. And so all of a sudden, like something clicked in my mind, I'm like, well, why don't I just partner the two parties together? And as soon as I made that connection, the biggest shooting star went right across the sky. It was massive. It was, it was literally the biggest thing I'd ever seen. And there was like two other people in the street. And I thought I was like hallucinating or something. They were like, what the heck like they also were like super shocked and i was texting my friends at the time i was like oh my god guys you'll never believe this i just like saw a shooting star there, make a wish i'm like mm -hmm. oh right like what should i wish for and i've my only wish has always ever been to start my own business and to build mm -hmm. something big mm -hmm. and it was just like that's my wish to get this done so i went home i immediately purchased the website pro bono um you know that was the first thing that came to my mind I started building the website, um, finished the website. I was ready to post it on like, you know, social media to get, let people uh, know about my idea. And I was like, this is kind of dumb. You know, who's going to actually want this? Like, maybe I'm just, you know, maybe this is just a stupid idea. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, now like, I've just spent, you know, 48 hours putting this website together, like every waking hour. Let's just like post it. And then I posted it and I got like uh, 10 or 15 businesses to sign up got 90 volunteers to sign up and uh and then that's how pro bono kind of started great yeah i i had heard versions of that story but i did not know about the shooting star so it was just downtown boston and then in the middle of the night did you see a shooting star yeah and it was huge it was like a meteor it wasn't even a shooting star it's all like uh you know there's gonna be some massive explosion or something it was huge <laughs> So, uh, you know, Randy, I know you, I know you're a busy guy. Can you describe a little bit of your day to day while running pro bono? You know, how do you spend your time? Definitely. Uh, I love to spend, if I could spend my time anywhere, I love to spend my time 
with the clients because I love to hear about their challenges. I love to think of like creative solutions of like ways we can help them out. Um, I definitely like will go into, you know, some client meetings um, with the different project teams just to make sure things are running smoothly. And I love to keep the relationship with the clients going. Um, but also there's a lot of, you know, I, there's 30 people who are working at Pro Bono and there's a lot of different teams. So most of my time is spent managing the different teams, um, making sure they're all moving in the right direction, um, that things are being done on time in a quality um, manner. I feel like now, since we've been running for two months, people are starting to become more autonomous and take more initiative on the team, which has been very useful because now I've started to be able to take a little bit of a step back and start to think about like the longer term vision of pro bono and how we're going to execute that. Um, but yeah, I would say it's a lot of management and then um, some client facing work as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, after running pro bono, uh, I, I'm sure it's been a learning experience in itself. So, so what are some things you've learned to stop doing um, in, in your running of pro bono? To stop doing? Uh, I think like the first thing that I, I mean, things are always changing because we're so new and I would be making things up if I said, oh, I know exactly what to do, right? You know, a lot of this is like we figure it out as we go. We see what works. We see what doesn't work. I think the first thing that I saw that didn't work was my initial idea for pro bono was to partner up volunteers with small businesses and just say, okay, like here's a volunteer, here's a small business. Let's, you know, partner them up and then, you know, let them be, let them work together. And the reason why I like that structure was because I was like, I'm going to be able to help so many small businesses. Like I have a hundred volunteers that have signed up. That's a hundred businesses that we can help. I realized though that didn't work. Um, it worked but not in the way I wanted it to because there's no way for me to manage quality and to make sure that anyone who came to pro bono got an amazing experience. And that was something I really wanted to provide. Like why would customers sign up to or clients sign up to join pro bono if they heard that, you know, other clients had a bad experience. So I realized I had to bring that all in house and make sure that I'm overseeing every team and that, um, and that every team is performing like quality work that, um, you know, we all approve of. And so I think that was the first thing that I realized like didn't work and and I decided to change. But like I said, stuff is always changing. We're so new. Um, it's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another question I have is on the flip side, oh, what is something you've learned to always do or keep doing while running pro bono? Yeah, so this is something that uh, it's very hard to do during the pandemic, but but the people who work at Pro Bono are what are the people who make the experience amazing for the clients. So people like you, Christopher, um, anyone who's on the team. And I think like treating uh, everyone on the team really well is key to providing a great experience to the client. If people don't enjoy the work they're doing, they're not going to you know perform well for the client. So really engaging the team, making sure I'm listening to them, making sure uh just making sure that they enjoy what they're doing i mean i quit my job because i didn't enjoy what i'm doing and this is you know right now this is a volunteer operation so people can leave very easily it's not like i'm guaranteeing them a paycheck um so it's really important to make sure that everyone really is learning and enjoying what they do um and it's hard because in the middle of the pandemic you know we're we're all over the country i'm in connecticut right now and you're in minnesota um, so it's definitely a challenge to have that sense of team and unity, but, you know, I think we try to find ways to bring that sense of team together, whether it's through having company meetings or, you know, happy hours or running competition, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, I think those are ways that we try to, you know, build that team morale. Yeah. I mean, can you elaborate a little more on that? Uh, you know, for people who aren't aware, what has Pro Bono done to keep all the consultants together? And, and Yeah, well, the first thing that was different from the original structure to this structure is now everything is teams-based. You know, before I was talking about one volunteer for one business, um, but now it's like, okay, Christopher, you were working with a client balance and you had your teammates on your team. Um, I think when you work in a group setting, you really build a relationship with those people who are on your team. Um, obviously that's, you know, there's 30 people uh, at pro bono and you're only working with 
like three of them out at balance. Um, however, like you still are able to build, I guess that, that relationship. And then, you know, to get teams to interact with each other, did things like meet and greets where, you know, skip made sure that, uh, you know, scheduled uh, meet and greets were, what was it? I think there's like six people per meeting could all go on a zoom chat together, introduce mm-hmm. themselves, talk about, you know, who they are, what they're interested in. Um, I do love the happy hours for sure that we've had. Those are fun because, you know, it's important to be able to communicate and meet each other in a non work setting. I think, you know, I don't always want, even though I'm very passionate about pro bono, I don't always want to talk about pro bono with people. I want them to learn about like what you're doing. Like, you're going to Puerto Rico, for example, or potentially. I'm very, you know, interested in hearing um, what happens with that. So, um, like I said, it's definitely difficult when everything is virtual over Zoom, but just need to find um, find ways to develop those relationships. And I have to be the person that fosters that. Otherwise, that's not going to really happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I, I will say at, at Pro Bono, there does seem to be a very strong sense of community and, and almost every individual has an interesting story. And so could you speak a little more, you know, because consultants are so central to Pro Bono, every single consultant, what exactly do you look for when hiring consultants? Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, someone who has a lot of experience is amazing. Um, well, you know, usually someone who has a lot of experience is going to be amazing, but I think there's a quality that's even more important and that's like the go getter quality. We're very new and I'm looking for people that are interested in learning, that are interested in taking on challenges, people who aren't afraid of ambiguity, who, you know, are comfortable, not always knowing the answers, but trying to find the answers and find the right, right ways to do things. I think that's the most important quality um, because it's not like working at your massive corporation where like, this is your one job and this is everything you do. You know, I think I've created a few jobs that don't even exist anymore after two months um, because I'm like, okay, this is, this is no longer necessary. Right. Um, so people have to be comfortable with changing and adapting and navigating, um, you know, how to do things on their own. And while I am always there for, you um, teammates to ask questions and understand like what they need to do. I really am looking for people to take initiative and take on a challenge. And I think that's the most important quality. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so on the other side, uh, what do you look for in a business for Bundle wants to partner with? Uh, you know, what type of businesses and, and just more so what is the ideal scenario? What kind of businesses and what kind of consultants are you trying to pair together? Definitely. So for the business question, I definitely don't have a specific type of business in terms of industry. I think in the future, we will have a better idea of like, we provide great solutions for this industry. Right now we're so new, I don't think we have that clarity yet. But when I look at um, you know, business owners and their businesses, I'm looking for a business that has a great product or service, right? Because our expertise is not necessarily improving product or service. Um, our expertise is helping a small business grow. And we do that by providing them with a comprehensive strategy, helping them with their marketing, helping them understand their finances and make decision from, decisions from those finances. We're looking for people who you know, know how to provide quality service, a quality product, um, however, need help um, developing their vision and executing on their vision. It's very easy for some business owners execute on the product side you know you might have a restaurant and they're great at making amazing food but then when it comes to okay you have to set up an online ordering system and you know it'd be great if you we got you into grocery stores and um you know start your own delivery business those are things they might be more hesitant to um not necessarily hesitant to work on but they just aren't very comfortable in doing that and i think the people on our team are really good at executing um making recommendations and then executing on those recommendations. So looking for business owners, like I said, like who have a great product or service, but need help executing on the business side. In terms of consultants, um, you know, there's no formula for the perfect consultant for a, a project. What we do is we work with the small businesses and we understand their needs, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, we might be working with a small business, like we're about to right now, who has 2,500 email subscribers and hasn't emailed their, um, 
email list in two and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there to grow their email marketing. And so I'm going to partner them with a consultant who is great at email marketing. You know, someone who's good at writing, maybe partner them with someone who's good at design if the email marketing needs some design work, right? At the same time, though, um, pro bono is more about, you know, following the status quo and doing what the business already does. But it's also about introducing new solutions. So while email marketing is great, is there opportunity to in, uh, involve a text messaging service? Text messaging is much more personal, has a much higher open rate, much higher conversion rate if you're trying to push products through texting. And so there may be opportunity for us to, you know, use integrate text message marketing with this business um, to keep engaging with their customers and to inform them of new products, new updates about the company, et cetera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, without getting into specifics because of privacy concerns, you know, what are the types of businesses Pro Bono has historically worked with? Uh, you know, what are the problems they have been facing? Definitely. Yeah, so I would say that every business we are working with right now has a problem with distribution channels, right? Because every business we work with has an in-person store and that is their main distribution channel. And now with the pandemic, they're seeing less traffic, whether it's because the government has completely shut them down or because consumers are afraid to go out and about and like walk into a storefront right now. So I think one of the biggest like challenges is, okay, how do we find new distribution channels that are pandemic proof, right? Um, so whether it's helping them develop an online store, whether it's helping them develop partnerships with other companies who may be able to distribute their product better, like getting into a grocery store, working like, you know, we work with some food businesses and we partner them up with apartment complexes or breweries because instead of, you know, having the customers come to you, let's go to the customers and bring the food directly to them. Um, if we're talking about a fitness business, well, you know, the fitness business may only be able to house uh, six people in their facility now instead of 30. So instead of having the customers come into our fitness facility, is there an area of opportunity to have outdoor classes like outdoor yoga classes or running, you know, a running community, et cetera, or to put those classes online um, using something like Facebook live or zoom and to get customers to pay for that. So I think that's like the, you know, um, big focus for what we're doing with a lot of businesses is like helping them expand their distribution channels. But there's also a lot of other areas like marketing, finance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And so, you know, something you touched on earlier were your long term visions uh, for Pro Bono. And so, you know, where do you see this company going in, in six months, in a year, and so on? Definitely. Well, I don't have a structured timeline. Um, I do know where I'm trying to push pro bono and I think we're moving in the right direction. So when I first saw a pro bono, <clears throat> sorry, pro bono, um, I knew that no matter whether we're in the middle of a pandemic or at the height of the economy, there are always going to be small businesses who need help, who may have a great product, but just need guidance in terms of, you know, executing on the business side. Um, however, they can't necessarily afford um, to hire a consultant or an expert marketer or whatever it may be. And so I knew there's, there's always going to be a need for, you know, free professional services, especially related to business. Right. And mm -hmm. so my long-term plan is to always have the free professional services available for small businesses who actually need free service. However, while I was working in small business consulting before I launched Pro Bono, I realized that um, small businesses in general, first of all, they're getting dominated by larger corporations. And you're especially seeing that now. You know, uh, small business can't roll out an app that you can do online ordering with, have a loyalty program, stuff like that overnight. Whereas you look at a company, you know, um, Starbucks already have one, but you look at these big companies and they have this technology, they have the manpower to just dominate the field, especially during these turbulent times. I, my vision for a small business consulting firm is to help small businesses become more competitive, not even necessarily against each other, but against the big guys, right? 
And so the way I think we're going to do that is by having experts on our team who are really good at specialized functions that really make a difference and an impact in a small business. And, you know, a small business like a restaurant, a fitness business can't hire a marketer for 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. It's too expensive, but they can get that marketer for eight hours a month. And that marketer could do actually a lot of work to grow their business by doing only eight hours of work a month. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I see us as being a tool for small businesses to access experts at a very reasonable, affordable price. Um, and that's very competitive against, you know, hiring out. There's so much more value than hiring out someone to do that full time. So I really think that's, you know, that's where we're going to go. And that will be a paid service um, alongside pro bono, which will always be free. Um, the paid service will be for larger companies who, you know, can actually um, afford to pay us and who have, like, have the financial resources to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so you kind of touched on the larger nationwide issues regarding small businesses. So, you know, how do you see the future of American business? You know, a lot of small mom and pop stores have been struggling with the pandemic and, and now it looks to be a recession. So, you know, how do you see the American economy for small businesses in the next while? Definitely. So, honestly, I don't think it's great because I read a lot about this and you know, this is actually a surprising, I don't know the exact stat, but it was something along the lines of like entrepreneurs, there's like entrepreneurship as it's as is at its lowest level in decades, right? There are less people um, starting their own businesses than ever before. Um, you look at the share of um, GDP that comes from large corporations compared to small businesses. Small businesses make up 99 percent of all businesses in the United States. They're the majority. But you look at GDP and the GDP output that these small businesses are creating has been shrinking every single year. And it has accelerated over the past 10 years when you know digital technology has become the key to being competitive and only large companies have access to stuff like that. Um, so I really do think that a lot of these small businesses are struggling. I think the pandemic is going to hit the small businesses the hardest. You know, Starbucks has billions of dollars in the bank. They're easily going to be able to survive the pandemic. They may have to close a hundred stores, but they have thousands of other stores. The small business owner who has one or two stores, you know, they're shutting down one of their stores to start and that's half their business is immediately gone. And I think that's something that we're going to see a lot of over the coming months with this pandemic. Um, and I don't know, like, you know, once things get back to normal, are there going to be a lot of entrepreneurs that go to start their own businesses and, you know, try to become competitive or are companies like Starbucks, like Amazon going to take over that market share that was lost um, by those small businesses that went out of business? That's something that I think, you know, is a question and we'll see how that kind of unfolds. But I think here at Pro Bono, like we are here to make these small businesses more competitive and mm -hmm. to uh, really make them shine. Yeah. So an interesting thing I was reading recently is that, uh, you know, in the past two weeks, there have been a lot of calls to boycott Facebook uh, because they're not doing enough to, to monitor content. But surprisingly, uh, Facebook stock has, has not really gone down, has, you know, gone up recently. And there's a suggestion that's because, you know, most of the people buying ads on Facebook are small businesses. So major corporations can boycott them. But, uh, you know, the bedrock of, of you know, companies like Facebook is small businesses and are small businesses. So do you think that, you know, the push for small businesses is to utilize the latest technology and, and really that's the only way that they're going to remain competitive? They that, like, it's not going to be the only way they remain competitive. Um, small businesses can adapt and innovate faster than a large business if they know how to do that. Um, but they have to be using the right technology and I believe it that small businesses are the majority, uh, are generating the majority of Facebook's revenue, their ad revenue. But the difference, you know, with the small businesses and the large businesses, with small businesses, it's usually the small business owner that's throwing up the Facebook ads. I know that's what like the food truck I've been working with had done. But the food truck owners aren't Facebook experts. They're just using like the boost Facebook post. Whereas these big companies have experts who are doing it. And it's the mm -hmm. experts that know 
the tips and tricks to turn your Facebook ads into, uh, you know, these big money generating, um, rev- like, uh, advertising streams, small businesses just don't have the know-how necessarily to do that. And so, um, you know, they might be wasting money on those campaigns, I guess. Sure. Sure. And so I'll, I'll let you off with a softie for the last question. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you do to relax? You know, what are your passions outside of pro bono and, and consulting? Yeah. My favorite passion, which started last summer and I might do it next week uh, or next weekend is hiking. Um, I love going outdoors and hiking. Um, like, you know, during the regular day or whatever, I'll try to get out for a walk and a walk is fun, but there's nothing like climbing a mountain. Um, Last year, I went to, what was it, Mount Musilaki, I think that's what it's called. And that was the first mountain I climbed in a long time. And I enjoyed it because you are sweating so much. You are really, you know, hauling to get to the top of that mountain. But once you get to the top, the views are spectacular. It's so relaxing. There's nobody else up there. And it's just like, wow, this is so worth it. Um, And so I did a few more hikes after that. I think I might go to Acadia National Park um, on July 17th with some with one of my friends. So, you know, excited to get back out there. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to, to chat with me today. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, for happy to be here. Thanks very much.